Hello, this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is how to select data on the MLS data form. You'll be selecting data on your MLS data form to create your scattergram and price line. I'll be doing this tutorial on the Mac, but it works the same way as, as it does on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point that out. So let's take a look at the MLS data form. When you look at this sheet, what you'll find is all the data you've exported is on this one sheet. This is all the data that was used to create several of your other graphs. When you read in your export file, which is downloaded from your MLS, most of the visual pricing system graphs are created automatically. However, your scattergrams and price lines are not. We don't create those for you automatically because we believe you'll want to put a subset of the data on those graphs. Be aware that there's also an active data sheet that's also under the positioning tab as well. Let me show you what that looks like. The key difference between these two sheets is that the active data sheet will only show the properties that are for sale or those that are under contract. Other than that, they work exactly the same. The active data sheet is primarily used for what we refer to as the positioning function. That's where you compare the subject property to other properties that are for sale. That is why you only find properties for sale on this sheet. Also, since you only have properties for sale on this sheet, you'll not be doing your price lines on this sheet. The way you select properties on this sheet is exactly the same way as the MLS data sheet. So let's go back to that sheet. To create your scattergram and price line, you'll need to select data under the respective column. This column right here is for scattergrams, and this column is for price lines. The data you select will then be used to create your graphs. There are two ways to select data. If you're familiar with these properties, all you have to do is drag your mouse over the boxes you want to select, then right-click and use the Select option. Of course, you can do the same operation under the Price Line column. As you will see, once they are selected, the box is checked. You can also unselect these properties by right-clicking and using the Clear option. Of course, you can do the same operation under the Price Line column. The second way to select data is by using the selection menu. If you position your cursor over the, the scattergram heading, you will see a small box saying that you can use your right click to select the menu options. When we right click, you'll see that one of the menu options is to select scattergram data. Once you select that option, you will see the following dialog box. This is a scattergram filter. This will allow you to select all the properties that match this selection. The default is select all the sold properties that have sold in the last six months. In most cases, this will work perfect for you. In some cases, you may choose to select all the properties that have sold in the last year, and you can do that very easily by modifying the date. As you can see, you can filter based on the year built, the price range, or the off-market date. You can also choose to include properties that are for sale or properties that have withdrawn. Whatever you filter on here will be the selection once you press the Select Properties button. For this example, Let's look at all the properties that have sold in the last six months. As you see, once you make your selection, several properties are selected for us. As you look closely at the data, you will see that we have several floor plans that have been selected as a result of the filter. When you create your pricing scattergram, many times you'll want to restrict the floor plans that you put on your scattergram. If the subject property is a one-story ranch, you'll want to compare it to other one-story properties as well. One of the features that can help you do this is to sort on each of these columns. To sort, all you have to do is to double click. Once you double click, it will sort all the data based on the column that you've double clicked on. If you double click again, it resorts it in the opposite direction. Now, once we sort based on style, we can come back to the scattergram column and sort based on the properties that we have selected. Now we can easily remove the properties that don't quite match, and from here we can create our scattergram. Now let's take a closer look at the Priceline Selection tool. To do so, let's right-click on the Priceline column and then select the Priceline option. When you look at the Priceline filter, you'll notice that this side looks just like the Scattergram filter, and it works basically the same way as well. Now the right hand differs. Here's where you can select data based on the size of the property. We find that price lines are most effective when you put homes that are comparable in size. Usually we suggest that they are plus or minus 10%. If you have a lot of properties, you might want to get a little closer and select plus or minus 7%. 
If you put the subject property size in here, the percentage will automatically be calculated for you. If you change the percentage, the values will be recalculated as well. Or if you find that a certain property you want to include may fall outside the range, you can just change the range by replacing the value. Now when you look at the default, you'll see the default is to include all status activity for the last six months. And you put the size in here to find all the properties that are comparable in size. Once you select the Select Properties button, all the properties that are selected will be shown. Okay, we've gone through the selection properties for both scattergrams and price lines. Now you're ready to create the graphs, and we'll do that in another video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some of our other videos. And don't forget to press the Like button below.